guys, how are you today? Thanks for joining me once again. I hope your summer's going well. If you're just tuning in, this is Cooking with Charles, and I'm your host, Charles Minnick. If you're a fan of the show, you'll know this is a new beard for me. I thought about shaving it, but I think I'm going to bring my career in a new direction. I don't know how much longer I can do the cooking show, so I thought it might be a body double. Check this out. I don't normally watch cooking shows, but when I do, I watch Cooking with Charles. Stay hungry, my friend. Is that not awesome or what? <laughs> I think I might stick with cooking and not the comedy because Dave in the control booth is going, no. <laughs> anyway, tonight's show. <laughs> this is what we have for you. We're going to make crab cakes tonight. We're going to make crab and shrimp cakes. And I'm going to show you how to do that on a gourmet budget. And after that, as I promised you last time around, we're going to show you how to make frog legs taste like chicken. So let's get going. As every week, we have a libation. Today's libation is a Jacob's Creek Cabernet. Doesn't really go with what we're cooking, but I just like it. It's my show and I'll drink it, damn it. So that's what we're doing tonight. And as you may have noticed, this is a screw top. Guess what? Get used to screw tops, folks, because that is where the future of wine bottles is going. Cork is a limited supply bark. They peel off a tree and, well, it's cheaper than plastic. They're using screw tops now, so it's no longer Boone's Farm and screw tops. It's now decent wines like this. All right, let's get started. Crab cakes with shrimp. What you're going to need first? About four saltines, or if you have like whatever cracker you like, about the size of four saltines. I like Waverly wafers, which are a slight buttery flavor, so I, this will be it. Check it out. So, oh, here we go. Oh, 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 we're, here we go. <laughs> We're going to get in the same page eventually, but about that size. You're just going to want to rough crush these. All right. Then I got a can of salad shrimp. That's going to go right in there as well. Now for our crab, you can do this a couple of ways. For the purposes of this show, I'm using a very fine, inexpensive canned crab meat. You can do this at home. I recommend you try it this way first because crab meat can be ex expensive. Um, you're going to want to get as much of a whole piece as you can in your crab when you cook it. But is it still going to be flavorful? It's still going to be good. But we're going to show you how to do it on a budget. So that goes right in there. One thing to remember with crab, crab comes with this in there. It's just a little piece of plastic like wax paper they put in the bottom and the top, make sure you take that out. Also, make sure you drain these uh, as much as you can because we don't want any water in there. So, I'm going to break this up a little bit. Give it a slight little mix. Okay, now we're going to add a little few things to this. We want about a quarter cup of mayonnaise. There we go. Um, as well as a little bit of ginger. You, my friend, can put whatever you want in there because these are going to be your crab cakes. Um, I've got some pureed ginger right here. You can use about a quarter teaspoon to half a teaspoon. You can use powdered if you want, but it's up to you. I'm going to put a, about a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, about a quarter teaspoon of onion powder. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of ground sea salt. Now, we could leave it like this if you want, but I'm going to add a little bit of egg to it. I got two eggs over here. These are large eggs, they're not your jumbo or extra jumbo. What I'm going to do with these is Just give those just a little bit. And I'm only going to pour about a quarter of those two eggs in there because I will be using this egg mixture later on in the show for the frog legs. Over here we got our pan. We're going to take about half a stick of butter. And I should have done this beforehand, but I did not. And we are just going to put this on about a medium, yeah, medium high heat. We're going to let that butter melt down. 
And when that melts down, we're going to get ready to cook some crab cakes. But first, we've got to make them. So we are just going to very gently fold these in. You don't want to mix it. You don't want to be rough with it. You want to keep the pieces as big as possible. But you want to make sure that all your flavors are incorporated. Now, the folding in and not being violent with your folding and your stirring and your mixing is really going to come into play when you're using bigger pieces of crab. Like if you're having a dinner party, you really want to press your in-laws and use those nice whole pieces of crab and uh, crab claw meat. Uh, but for our purposes tonight, as I said, gourmet on a budget. We've got that. That looks okay. I think I want to get just a little more cracker crumbs in there. Again, we're gently going to fold that in. Whew. It's tough work, folks. Really tough work. Oh, time to stop for a libation. Mm. So I mentioned it's uh, summertime here. Hope it's summertime where you are when you're watching this. I myself am having a great summer. All right, that is mixed. This needs just a few more seconds, maybe even a few more minutes to uh, melt down. There we go, while well, that's happening. We're going to take our pound of crab meat here and shrimp. I'm just going to make a few, a couple little cakes. We don't want to pound them together. We don't want to like mash, mash, mash. We just want to lightly form these. What's going to happen is once we cook these, the egg is going to bind everything together. Now, if you don't want to use egg, you can use uh, breadcrumbs. Uh, that will also help. Or more, even more cracker crumbs. We're going to get about five, and you can make these as big or as little as you want. Actually, you know what? I think I'll get six out of this. So, folks, let's do a little bit of business right here. While I'm doing this, I want to remind you, you can always email me at cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. I can do recipe requests. I can even cook for you for a certain fee. <laughs> uh, you can also catch all my past episodes on YouTube. The uh, YouTube channel is Cooking with Charles M. Charles M is one word. You can, you can relive all my, pa all, your, all my past episodes. Your favorites are going to be there. So after my show airs every Monday night at 7 for a new episode, it takes about a week for it to get on YouTube. So check it out. Okay, here we go. All right, folks, we're going to improvise tonight because I realize I forgot a very important thing at home called tongs or a spatula. <laughs> so we're going to figure this out as we go along. We got the butter. It's bubbling a little bit. That's just what we want. And we're just going to place these right in there. There we go. We're going to turn that heat up. And folks, we are going to cook these probably about four minutes aside. All right. So why don't we take a quick little break. When we come back, we'll see how these are going. And we're going to start uh, seasoning up our frog legs. So we'll be right back. Take care. Hi, I'm Charles Minnick, host of GTV smash hit, Cooking with Charles. I've teamed up with the Goffstown Network to tell you about their outreach and food pantry programs. The mission of the Goffstown Network is to provide for the hunger-related needs of our neighbors in Goffstown and their surrounding communities. Founded with the governing principles that no person should go hungry and every person deserves our care. 
The Goffstown Network serves the area by providing food and other services on an emergency short-term basis. This spirit of community and mutual caring is extended to anyone in Goffstown, Dunbarton, and New Boston. Normal hours of operation are Wednesday evenings, 6 to 8 p.m., and Saturday mornings, 10 a.m. to noon. Now, you can, you can also assist them through donations of time, food, or money. Like the help they give, the help they receive is also greatly appreciated. You can reach them by calling the number on your screen or by stopping by the Parish House of St. Matthew's Church. It's located in downtown Goffstown at 7 North Mass Street, right across from Sully's. We could not do this show without the help of our friends at Sully's Superette. Since 1987, Sully's has provided the area with the best meats around. Here at Cooking with Charles, we not only count on them for their kind donations of meat, but John and the gang at Sully's also provide us with the best produce, deli items, and libations that make Cooking with Charles the huge success it is. From all of us at Cooking with Charles, thank you. Oh, guys, thanks for waiting. Guess what? <laughs> Even I screw up sometimes. The, uh, the lack of a spatula today in the studio really has hampered my ability to make these uh, crab cakes. But however, we lost three soldiers, but we saved the other three. So we got three crab cakes. So let's drink to that, because that's all we can do at this point. And we'll see what we can do with our frog legs. Okay, let's do it. First things first, oil. You're gonna use olive oil, use whatever kind of oil you want. We wanna just get that preheating on low for right now. Cause what we're going to do is, we're gonna make a little bit of a mess here. Think of fried chicken. That's what we're doing with our frog legs. Okay, so we need lots of paper towel for our next few steps. And guess what we have right here? Paper towel. Gonna put that right there. Gonna put that on there. So frog legs, well, you can catch these yourself if you're so inclined, or you can do what I did. I went down to the supermarket and I bought these. These are farm-raised frog legs. Yeah, I know, frog leg farm. <laughs> Bunch of legless frogs rolling around now on the farm. Anyway, what I've done, I put these in buttermilk because like chicken, we're gonna fry these up. And what do you do with chicken? Well, you put it in buttermilk. So what we're going to do right now is take these. Can we get a shot of this, Dave, right here? Look at this little guy, huh? Oh, look, he's dancing. He's ready. He is doing the high kicks. Oh, he is so happy. But guess what? This right here, little difficult to fry. So to make it easier, done. Nice little frog leg right there. So let's get going. <laughs> okay. We get the frog legs. They've been soaked in buttermilk overnight. We got a little bit of flour over here. We're going to season our flour. A lot of pepper. A little bit of salt. And garlic powder, onion powder, more powder, powder everywhere. Okay, what else? I'm going to add a little hot sauce to this. But I'm going to add this into my egg wash right there. What else do we need? Well, I think we're ready. We got these in here. All we're going to do, oh, let's get our flour all mixed up. Just gonna lightly dredge that in flour. In the eggs that we had earlier. And we're just gonna put those right there, voila. All right, next leg. Same thing, dredge in flour, put in the egg wash, into the cracker crumbs. Now, I'm using the cracker crumbs. You can use bread crumbs. Use whatever you want. Let's speed this up a little bit. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. Now one thing I realized, or I found out, shouldn't say I realized, but when I was doing my research for frog legs, because when I go grocery shopping, I've seen these puppies in the uh, frozen food aisle by the seafood. 
And I was always curious, so I started doing some research. They're pretty popular around the world, except New Hampshire. So I figured, why not? And I know years ago I had them at some restaurant I worked at, and I thought, oh, yeah, those are fun. But now we have them here for you. I'll get that little more batter on there. Voila, we're just letting those sit there. Do we have any more in our bag? Yep. We've got one more. Flour this puppy up. Egg wash this guy. Voila. Now, let's get our hands clean. While we're doing that, let's turn our heat up to another medium. Oh, let's wipe these hands. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Give ourselves some working room. All right, don't need this anymore. We're gonna turn this over, use the other side later. Oh, so, folks, again, I apologize for not having a spatula or tongs to turn things appropriately, but uh, we'll fix that. All right, let's see how this is doing. A uh, little hotter, but we'll do our best, folks. Frog's legs it is. Move this right over here. And I'm gonna use this right here. Let them drain once we're done cooking them. All right. I need just a little bit of liquid here. Let's see how. Eh, I think we're doing pretty good. I think I'm ready. See what these boys do. Actually, that could probably heat it up a little bit more, so I'm going to turn the heat up. Move that. There we go. Now we're probably going to do about three, four minutes aside. Now, if you notice how I'm laying these down, one, we're getting better use of the pan. Two, there's a slight um, angle to the floor here. It's not level. So all my oil is really hanging out in this side of the pan. So I'm trying to get as much as I can down here. But hey, we'll see how this all works out at the end, folks. And I must let you know, I've never cooked these before. <laughs> this is my actually my first time cooking these, so we're on this journey together. Hopefully you bought your you brought your own bottle of wine, so if it's not good, you can just drink your drink your sorrows away like I will. All right, while that is cooking on that side, let's make a little aioli sauce. We are going to need a little bit of mayonnaise which I have right here. You should make this in your blender at home, but I don't have a blender here tonight, so we're just gonna mix it by hand. Do about a quarter cup of mayonnaise, a couple of tablespoons of oil, salt, I mean pepper, and here's my salt. Give it a little kick. We're gonna go a little spicy brown mustard. You can use Dijon if you want. Probably about a tablespoon of that. And of course, to incorporate everything else we've been cooking tonight, some onion and garlic powder. Voila, we are done with that. All right, while that sits there for a second, let's check these out. Oh, look at that. They're actually coming out okay. 
We got a nice golden brown on this side. Oh wow, guys. I think I have redeemed myself. My word, folks. All right. These will just take a few minutes. I think on that side. Yeah, I'd say about five minutes a side. So, now we've got our little sauce going here. All we're gonna do, just mix it up as much as possible. If you have a blender, it'll blend up nicely. Just want to get all that oil and all that mayonnaise incorporated. Now when I said aioli sauce, well aioli sauce is just a fancy way of saying mayonnaise. Um, when somebody makes an aioli sauce, they're making mayonnaise. We're adding stuff to it. So if you go into a restaurant and they say we have a grilled chicken, free range chicken sandwich with pepper jack cheese and a curry mayonnaise. That's it. All we're doing is adding to it. And what we're going to add to this is a little bit of basil. And some scallions, not too many scallions. Got a lot of nice bold flavors in this. There we go. This is going to be our sauce for both items. Voila. All right, let's check these out over here. See how they're coming along. Wow, folks. We have some that has fallen off the bone already. So let's Move those out to the edge. <laughs> Guys, I think tonight's show should be called a road show. <laughs> it's looking okay, but I really don't know how the heck it's going to come out. I got the guys in the booth over there shaking their heads. Anyway, we'll make it work. It's an experiment. This, folks, is what cooking is all about. You don't always know what's going to happen until you try it. The thing is, you learn from your mistakes like everything else in life, and you go forward and you make it again. Because I know I love crab cakes, and I just don't really like that. It's just a matter of cooking it the right way and figuring out what works. Um, if I could do the show over again, well, I'd definitely have a spatula with me and some tongs. but. Hindsight's 2020. These bad boys are coming along. I'm gonna cut a little piece off of one of them to see what's going on because it's falling off the bone. And let me grab a little fork. Let's just see what's going on with this. Oh wow, guys, even when I screw up, this is awesome. Mmm. Wow, that's really good. God, I am awesome. Mmm. <laughs> a few, few more minutes on these puppies. Or <laughs> should I say froggies? <laughs> now folks, listen. We've cooked pork on the show. So we've got Miss Piggy covered. Now we're cooking Kermit. I think I'll do a show on Fozzie Bear meat next. We'll get all the Muppets.
Well, we'll figure this out, folks. I would say just another minute and we should be good. And folks, as always, don't forget, I know I said it before, but I'll say it again. Cooking with Charles M, Charles M, one word, that is on YouTube. You can watch all your favorite episodes anytime you want. And email me at cookingwithcharles at gmail.com. And uh, I can answer any of your cooking questions. You can come on air with me. You can cook something. I can show you how to cook something. So don't be afraid. Email me. All right, folks. I think it's time we start thinking about doing some plating. Just gonna get a little garnish action going on over here, nothing special. But you know, presentation is everything. As you know, you eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth. So I've said in past shows, if it looks like poo, you may think it tastes like poo. Except in this case, if it looks like frog legs, it'll taste like chicken. All right. Woohoo! There we go. Wow. Oh, those are hot. See, this is where you need some tongs. All right, we're gonna let those cook for a minute. I'm gonna keep this on the side in case the guys in the studio want some, but let's check this out, folks. Here we are, huh? Got some crab cakes. We got some frog legs. Now, let's figure out these frog legs. All right, I'm going in. Oh, fell apart. Mmm. I want to say it tastes like chicken, but it does taste good. Mmm. It's like a cross between chicken and something else. Can't quite tell you what it is, but let me tell you, I can say it's excellent. Mmm. It is fall off the bone. Good. Wow. Mmm. Oh, little well. Mm. Oh, <laughs> watch the bones. Mm. Folks, that's actually pretty good. Now the crab cakes. Mm. These are killer. These are good. Oh, this I would recommend to try every night of the week. You cook these. They will love you for it. All right, folks, there we have it. We get frog legs, which are okay. <laughs> we get crab cakes, which are excellent. So you decide what you want to cook at home. Until then, my name is Charles, and when you're cooking with Charles, you're cooking with good looking. We'll see you later. Take care, folks. Till next week.